Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be looking at the Benko Gambit, which derives from the Benoni Defense. If you haven't watched the video on the Benoni Defense, you may want to watch that first. But we'll go ahead and get into it. It starts out with pawn to d4, black responding knight to f6, pawn c4, pawn c5, white bringing his pawn down to d5, and then black playing pawn to b5. And this is a very aggressive gambit that black has. And what it does, it's one of the most respected gambits that you will see in chess. And basically, white is going to be up an extra pawn in material, but black is going to get sufficient counterplay on the queen side. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. Now, white does have the option of declining the gambit. One of the most popular lines that you'll see in the decline line is knight to f3. But this is very uncommon. So today we're going to look at the various lines that come from the accepted line, and that is bish, excuse me, pawn takes on b5. And from here, black's going to have the same move every time, and that's pawn to a6. And what black is looking to do is he's looking to give up both his pawns. He's going to get this one back, but he's looking to give up his pawns on the b and a file so he can have semi-open files for his rooks. He's eventually going to want to castle on the king side, and he's going to want to bring both of his rooks to the A file and the B file, so his rooks can rain havoc down on the queen side. In a chess game, you're normally going to attack the king side or the queen side, and black's going to give up that material early on, so he can have a massive attack on the queen side later on. So here's where we're going to spend a lot of our time. There's a few options that white has in this situation. The most common that you will see is for the pawn to capture on a6. And from here, black's going to recapture with his bishop on a6. He's developing his bishop. No reason to take with our, our rook and not our bishop. We want to develop a piece while we're taking. And at the same time, we're putting a lot of pressure on the king side of white. White would really like to develop his light square bishop. It's his most powerful bishop in, for white. But he can't play a move like e3 because then black can come in switch off bishops, but now white's king can no longer castle. So it gives a lot of problems for white to try to develop his light square bishop. From here, a lot of times you will see white develop his knight to c3, and then black is going to bring his pawn to d6. And from here, as you can tell, since we have a pawn on e7, d6, and c5, Black's planning on fin catting his bishop, meaning he's planning on playing g6. He's then going to play bishop to g7. He's going to castle kingside. He can bring his queen to c7. He can bring his queen to b6. This knight here is eventually going to come to d7. And then we're going to bring our rook to b8. And this is going to put a lot of pressure on the queen side of white. This is the ideal setup that black would want in the Binko game. But as you can see, black has both his rooks on the B and A file, which are both semi-open, so he has a lot of pressure on the queen side. Also, the king is very safe here after the black bishop is being kettled on the king side. As you can see, black still has a reasonable amount of pressure in the middle. And even though white is up in material by one pawn, black has a huge attack that he can make any time on the queen side. So even though black is down in material at this point, a lot of black players actually prefer this position just because of all the attacking lines that they can have in this particular situation. Another move you will see in the Binko Gambit is from here, instead of the white pawn taking on a6, you'll see a move like e3. And what this does is a few things. It allows the light square bishop for white to attack this b5 square. And at the same time, it doesn't block in its development. White now has the option. In the example we looked at before, white pretty much is guaranteed to fianchetto his bishop, meaning he's going to bring his pawn to g3 and then bring his bishop to g2. But here, white has options. He doesn't have to. If black captures on b5, the light square bishop for white can now come into b5 and recapture. Whereas before, White couldn't do that because then his king could not castle once the bishops were traded off. So this is an idea that you may see a lot of times from White. Another very popular move that you'll see, instead of e3, a lot of times you'll see White bring his pawn to b6. And you may look at it and say, that's a kind of funny move. It doesn't do too much for White. But what it does do is it doesn't allow Black to gain control of the b and a files like you would. 
Yes, Black does have a semi-open file on the B file, but he doesn't have the B and A file. White's going to give back the material that he took. He's going to give it back in exchange once the queen takes on B6. White's now going to play, excuse me, he's first going to play knight to C3, and then he's going to look to play pawn to E4. After pawn to D6, White's going to play pawn to E4. And White's basically saying, I'm going to give back the material to Black, even things up. In exchange, I'm going to focus completely on the center control. So a lot of White players, if they don't like getting into the bingo gambit, now, if you're playing White and someone offers up the bingo gambit, it's not wrong to accept it. But just know that your queen side is going to be attacked and it's going to be harassed the entire game. So if you don't want to deal with that, I highly recommend responding like this, playing with your pawn down to b6 and after the queen captures on b6, then just developing your knight to c3, good central control, and then developing your pawn to e4. Eventually you can bring your pawn to e5, not right away, but once you build up pieces in center control, you can do that. White's going to try to apply a lot of pressure to the center and then attack on the king side. Obviously, Black's king is going to be castle on the king side. He's going to fianchetto his bishop to the king side. And so White's going to try to counterplay and attack on the king side. So these are a few things you may see in the bingo gambit if you are a very aggressive player. For Black, you may want to try this out, especially if you like attacking the king side, excuse me, the queen side, and you're very comfortable fianchetting your bishop on the king side, putting a lot of pressure on the queen side. This is a very good attack. If you're White, you do have a lot of options if you want to hold on to the material and play the main line or you can decline or you can give back the material right away in the example that we just looked at so hope you guys are a little bit more familiar with the bingo gamut try it out sometime let me know how it worked out thanks for watching the video if you haven't already please subscribe and I'll see you guys next video thanks for watching